So let's get started. So I was just explaining. Uh, so how can you get uh, that memory address value? So third object cat memory address. Hash code. So same way you can create a you no know, this memory address also. Rambo object. So the hash code is the method which returns an integer value. So the return type method is it is available in the object class so object class this method is there return say hash code value for the object this method is supported for the benefit of hash tables such that so provided by hash map but so any memory value if you want to get you can use that so do that same clear first compile java c Cat dot Java. This is how to command prompt how to execute the code. And then run the code. To run the code, you have to use Java and class name. See, the Rambo is 17063, right? And this is 117. So both the memory addresses are different. Now you can you can write, okay, you can write another interview question also. This one. So these are numbers, right? How can you compare numbers? Hmm? How can you compare two objects? So these are numbers. So you can write. Hmm? How can you compare two objects? So objects compare is nothing but object uh, references. You are comparing the object references. So object reference means this one. But how can you compare? So what is the operator you need to use to compare? How can you compare numbers and which which operator you have to use? Equal to equal. To equal. Equal to equal to, double equal to you have to use. So now tell me what is the output of this? So what is this number? One this one. one. What is this number? This one. Is this equal? No. So what you will get here? Error. True or false? False. False, right? It is going to return a false. So let's execute that. Uh, so I have to first compile because see, I have changed the code, right? First I have to compile. Every time if you change, you have to compile the code to take effective of that new code. Then you have to run the code. So you get a false because so both are different. So because it's different objects, that's why you're getting a false here. Yeah. So that's it about objects, class and objects, all this. And let's go now. Uh, so whoops concepts. So what are the advantages of whoops concepts? So whoops concepts make your development and maintenance is going to be very easy. So and also it provides a data hiding. It provides data hiding. So it avoids a duplicate code and uh, so the whoops concepts mainly shows the functionality to the users and hides the internal logic hides the internal logic that's advantages of whoops concepts now the first two what are the different whoops concepts we have so we have a different whoops concepts like uh, inheritance 
abstraction, polymorphism, encapsulation. So encapsulation is the one of the another OOPS concept. So basically, it's a one of the approach where you can reuse uh, your code with this OOPS concept. So the encapsulation came here, but yeah, these are the what are the OOPS principles? If anybody asks, you need to give class, object, encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, abstraction. So these are the things you have to tell. So what are the OOPS principles means? Class, object, encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, abstraction. These are the OOPS principles. So we already discussed the class and object. Now we need to discuss first one, encapsulation. So what is mean by encapsulation? So encapsulation means, so it is a process of wrapping the data and code as a single unit. So data and code means that data is your variables, instance variables. Code means the methods. So those are binded together. Where they will be binded together? Inside the class, right? Inside the class only you can find variables and methods. They binded in the class. So that means a class is an example for the encapsulation process. But all classes are encapsulated? Not necessary. And But there are some rules. If you want to follow the encapsulation, there are some rules. In the encapsulation, you have to make your variables as a private and methods as a public. Then what will happen if you make the variables as a private? Hmm? So what will happen if you make the variables as a private? It will be accessed within the class. Excellent. Super. You can access in the same class, not outside the class. And methods you are making public. That means you can access anywhere in the entire project or outside project also. So that means, so your variables are private and methods are public. Then how can you access these variables in other classes? Through these methods only. Anything if you want to modify or... Uh, uh, no, get the data or insert the data into these variables. You have to do with these methods. So what methods you need to use to set the data for the variable? Setter method. Every variable has a one setter method and one getter method. Setter methods are used for setting the variable value. And getter method is used for getting the data. So getting the data, that's the getter method. So, and then this, uh, that is what encapsulation. So what is encapsulation means? Just recapping. Encapsulation is the process of binding the data and code as a single unit is called encapsulation. In the encapsulation process, you will make your variables as a private and methods as a public, and you will create a setter and getter methods for every variable. Setter methods are going to set the variable value from any class. Because methods are public, you can set it. And uh, Getter methods are used to get the data anywhere. Once you set it, you can get it from any class because the method is public. So setter methods are void methods and getter methods are return type methods. Getter methods are return type methods. So that's the, so this setters and getters, uh, so you can create in the, encapsulated class. If you want to say class encapsulated, so these rules you have to follow. You have to make the variables as a private and you have to create the every variable, one setter method, one getter method. 
setter methods are wide type that means they won't return and getter methods are return type they will return same data type as a variable so what are the variable data type same data type it returns so that the setters and getters and so let's see now so when encapsulation how it will impact if if there is no encapsulation and what will happen if there is encapsulation what will happen i'll show you but why do you need encapsulation so what you can achieve with encapsulation you can secure the data if there is a sensitive data you can secure that data with the encapsulation process all the banking related data any sensitive data you will declare them as a private so that other side other class people cannot access it directly so if they want to access if they want to give a data and they have to follow the method they have to call the method and they will set but without uh, no directly variable you cannot call if you call you can give any data right there is no control so with this encapsulation process you can give a full control to that class and others cannot modify so that's the advantage that means more security will be there for your data so data security will be achieved with this encapsulation process so you can see banking all our uh, uh, account id account balance everything will be declared as a private that's why nobody can see so my bank balance details and your bank details i cannot see that so nobody likes that also right that how you can hide it you can hide that data through variables making as a private and if you want to call that bank balance you there is a methods and that methods you call it same everywhere that's the encapsulation means so suppose let me show you one of the examples uh, without control there is no control and they can give other person can give his own data that will be not right right so that's what i'm going to show you here so here this take this album class in this album so like you know album name album artist album price i'm setting this this is a four three variables and and also one more number of copies these four variables i'm going to set in this album class then create some methods sell copies and order copies methods but i'm making them here public this variable name if it is public i can access this variable in another class right easily there is no restriction so then i don't need a setter and getter methods i can access directly this name artist price and number of copies because they are public so there is a one more shop stock keeper stock keeper class in the stock keeper class you can uh, have one uh, stock keeper name and the constructor this is the constructor class name and constructor name is same so i'm giving that so this is how you can store here and then you can create a one uh so me method main is album method and this is referring album reference variable and album name album artist price and number of copies so now what i'm doing i will call the album variable with this object reference right object reference dot name so that name i am assigning to this in the local variable name and album dot artist i am assigning to this artist album dot price i am assigning to this price album dot number of copies they assign to this one this one so these are the different variables you can assign now see you can call that album is managed by this dot name this dot name means this this class this class name this class instance variable so this is a another keyword i'll tell you this is a reference variable it refers to current class instance variables instance methods and constructors 
current class objects basically simply remember this will refer the current class objects what is the current class here stock keeper right stock keeper only stock keeper related stock keeper class related instance variables and instance methods it will refer that's what this when you call this when i call this dot name means and this class name it is going to refer even name you have in the album class also but when you refer with this keyword that will represent current class instance variable see current this is the name is a current class instance variable and i am referring album class variable with the album object reference this is the album object reference right this is the album see the class and reference variable so that object reference so this object reference i am using and then see and you can give your own data here see that they are giving here minus 100 minus 1000 for uh, price minus 50 for number of copies is this a valid data is this a valid data the number of yeah. uh, number of albums of minus 50 is it possible no minus 50 it doesn't go right that that's there is no control because he is giving his own data how can you control this so don't give a permission to call the variables don't give a permission to call the variables then it is possible then if you don't want to call the variables other classes so you have to make it as a private but we made here public so that is the they are not following here encapsulation process that's why control is not there for this class and the other people giving their own data because of that there is no security there is no control here so in order to make a control and more security and we have to restrict the people not to call variables directly so that's what i'm going to show you let's create an album class okay first so we'll create an album class so album dot java just call this okay then same way create a stock keeper class See public class stock keeper, uh, public string name, and this is the constructor. So, how do you know this is the constructor class name? Constructor. Class class. That's a clear indication for you. Okay. Parameterized constructor. I'm, I'm going to discuss constructor part also, don't worry. So parameterized constructor. So here see the difference is here class keyword is there for a class. But here there is no class keyword. Constructor means just access modifiers, then class name. Then in the parameters, you can have a parameters you, without parameters also you can create it. So now this keyword. See now this is the instance variable, right? This is the instance variable. So instance variable. So this dot name equal to name. So which will refer this dot name means instance variable. Always remember this keyword, any variable name before this is there. 
current class instance variable. Now this is the parameter, the parameter value. That means you are assigning this constructor parameter to instance variable. Now manage album. So you are managing the, this guy is managing the album. Now you can create a, so main method. So you create a stock keeper. Stock keeper, SK equal to new stock keeper. You have to give some name for this, right? So, Jando, I think we have these names. I'll just copy this. So you have to call this method, sk dot main is album. See the main is album, you have to give, see what are all the parameters you have to give. Album object, you have to pass. Name. What is the album object? So you have to pass, you have to give. So what is the object reference value? Hmm? Catch here. So what is this value? Hmm? So what this value will represent? Robot you can. Um... What this value will represent? Reference variable, object. The reference variable, but what is that value? It is a storing here, what value will store? The below oh. ones, the age, name, or... Oh, that is not, that is a variables. That is variables. These are variables. Instance variables. These are. It trade. It saves message. Either methods. Sleeping. No. Those Which are all members. So those are all members will go store in this memory. No memory. You are not following the class object structure. What is the object structure? I told you class name, object reference, equal to new class name, right? This is the structure, right? Now, yep. in this class, in this stock keeper class, the first part is done. This, this left part is done. What is pending for this value? This value will be the right side one, right? Yep. The right side one, you have to write. All the people are missing this part, this concepts. So that part is new album. That's what, right? This, this value is new album you can see in the cat class this value is this one new cat is the value of this is storing here here also this value is storing here and that's what i'm following this value is always this one right side one so the right side one i have to write so See this assignment operator, that means this value represent this one. So now here also, and this value means new album. And you give the name. So all this, uh, this values I'm giving. So Slippery when wet is the name. Bon Jovi is the artist name. And price is the minus thousand. A number of copies is the minus 50. But this is not valid. But I'm so let's go and give that as of now. Okay. Just give that. See, you are getting automatically here name value this one, artist value this one, and price and number of copies. Okay. Now execute this. So first Java C stock keeper. Stockkeeper dot Java C dot class will generate. Okay. So Java C dot Java. What happened? So new album. Cannot find symbol new album.
should compile automatically. Java C stock keeper. They are in the same package, right? We don't need to import also. Did we make it? It's the same. First, let's compile this Java C album dot Java. Okay. Then stock keeper dot. This is strange. To get run Java. Compilation problem. Line number twenty one. This is weird. It should not be the case. Why not for Stop keyboard. Still the same, right? Sometimes say that uh, typos, Java C option source well. Correct only. File not found. Okay. Weird. Okay, so I don't want to waste time. Let me show you here. Uh, unnecessarily, we don't want to waste time there. Uh, same thing, it will be easy for us. Mm, so here only, right? We created, yeah, this is our, let me create our package here. Oops, programs. Long class just uh, create album class here. And same you create a stock upper class.
Yeah. So you can run directly. You can see here there is no issues. Here you won't get any issues. Run as Java application. See. So it is printing, right? It is printing. Uh, so all the values basically. See the album is managed by this storekeeper. So album name is slippery when wet artist this one. And price is this is not valid, but there is no control. He is giving his own data. So how can you stop that? So simply go and stop it by making the private variables. Private. 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 So and generate these setters and getters. How can you generate? Just select select them, right click, source, see generate getters and setters. Source, generate getters and setters. And select all and insertion where you want to insert. So after number of copies. So here I want to insert. So after uh, insert point after this one, after number of copies you insert, I'm saying, just public methods. See this now, set number of copies, set price, set artist, set name, get number of copies, get price, get artist, get name. See, all the getter methods are written type methods. See, written type methods, written type. The setter methods are wide methods. And set name is whatever this instance variable name that is coming here. And you are setting this parameter value to this dot name means instance variable. This dot artist means instance variable. So whatever when you call this method, you will give this parameter value, right? That will go and store in the this instance variable. And the problem with here only, right? Set price and set number of copies. People are giving their own data. Now, see if you give here, if you are going for with this logic, and whatever they are giving, it will set. But I don't want like that, right? So I want to write a logic. What is the logic? I'm controlling. Okay, if price is greater than zero, okay, if price is greater than zero, then only set that value. Else, you set that to zero. So this is my control. I I I am controlling. So nobody can give wrong data, double data. So I'm specifying same way here, right here. So if number of copies greater than zero, this number of copies is greater than zero. So then you set it and this number of copies you make it as a so zero see now even if you give a negative data also no issues see now see we made a setters and getters and private if you make private these things you cannot access directly right see the variables you cannot access see it is saying not visible so album dot name is not visible so how can you call if in place of name you need to call so how can you set the variable value set name value that's it all the setter methods you are going to call so this also set artist set, set Set number of copies. That's it. So now you see this one also here. You don't need to call the just call the getter method. You want a value, just call getter method. Get name. Get artist. Get price get price get 
get number of copies. The getter method. Getter method will get the value. So that's it. Now see, even though if they give negative value also, it won't print. So but me, there is a full control. See, full control. So this is how you can set the your variable value. Whatever, see, when I am calling the method, so I'm giving this value. This value will go and store in the, the setter method. We'll setting the value to that album variable. So artist value, this one will go and set in that album artist value, album in instance artist value. So this value, the logic will execute in the setter price and that will set as a zero because a negative. So minus 50 also, it will execute this setter method and set the value. So this is the logic so you can build it. Okay, so this is all about uh, advantage of, you uh, know, instead of making directly uh, variables, you are just calling a setter and getter methods. Okay. So any questions? So that's all about encapsulation. Encapsulation. So setter methods are called for setting the variable data getter methods are used for accessing the data so you are accessing setter methods also called mutator methods and getter methods also called accessor methods so that's all about encapsulation okay so let's join back and we'll discuss about uh, constructor so first this is another selfie video you need to do so discuss about what is encapsulation and uh, explain in uh, just two minutes or one minute about encapsulation, what you understood. And then, so practice, uh, so one class you create a, and then a mobile class you create. In the mobile class, you declare some variables, mobile OAS, mobile price, mobile uh, name, all these things and create a setter and getter methods. That's another uh, program practice and uh, screen record you do and send it to us. So that's the, the two tasks you need to do. One is for class and objects. One is for uh, four, four exercises, you got it. Okay. Please note down all these exercises. Without fail, please do that uh, exercises. Yeah, thank you. So let's come back and we'll discuss constructor.